Thank you for staying with us, and this is still Plus Politics. Now, as a do state 2020 elections approaches, 2023 elections approaches, um, security agencies in Edo State who have been somewhat silent concerning the recent happenings in the state have to cry the security situation in the state. The security chief stated that the situation was capable of scaring both local and foreign investors away. They went further to advise politicians to solve political conflicts so that the security agencies could invest its resources in tackling security challenges. And joining me still to discuss this is political analyst Jibike Oshodi. Thank you for staying with us, Jibike. Thank you. And also journalist Dibbo Olayoku. Thank you, Dibbo, for staying with us it's still. Nice, it's a now, now, what is your reaction to all of the recent happenings in Edo State? It, it calls for concern. Um, the gov, 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 not Godwin Obaseki seems to be um, in a back and forth with the, the all progressive chairman, um, former governor of Edo State, Adam Oshomale. All of this development, what, what is your reaction to it? Dibbo. Well, you know, the politics is a game of uh, contest. And uh, it becomes more very stiff in Nigeria because it's a very lucrative business. If you look at uh, the constitution of the country, the governor of a state is said to be the chief executive officer. Though the chief security officer aspect of it is not that very pronounced, but is the chief executive officer. And then you look at how he dispenses favor and patronage without going to the national level at the level of uh, the governor. But let me quickly chip in this, because uh, I think it will serve as a lesson to those who believe they can install their boy, boy in court, as a governor, so that they will continue to dish out orders. The examples have shown, we have it in um, Akwaibom, where you have Akwaibio and uh, Udom, we have it almost across the state. We have Ganduje and Kwakwaso in the north. That the energy you dissipate in installing your boy as the person that will take over from you, if I have used that energy to allow a level playing field, maybe somebody else will have emerged. The problem in Kando is a game of contest for power, nothing more, nothing less. It is not about the other people. It is not about the interest of Nigeria. It is about two people that want to hold the levers of power. And that is why we are seeing all this. You don't need any security agency to tell you that the 2020 election in Nigeria is going to be, I, don't want to, I don't want to use the word bloody, but it's going to be like a war. Because you have a governor who knows the extent of the power he will of his office. Godfather. Hmm. He knows him because before you can trust somebody with power, that okay, take over after me. The person must be very close to you. The person must know how you did it. And the man himself, that is the national chairman of APC, who feels slighted that upon all I did to make you a governor, this is what you are doing to me. So that is why it is going to be a very, very big war. And I believe that the security agencies have, that have cried out now are doing everything necessary to nip it in the board. It's not just coming to tell us that it's going to be very serious. We know it is going to be. Yeah. We already seen the signs. They said the money shows the night. So did they rather. So it is now left to them to, if you have identified these areas, if you identify these individuals, you place surveillance on them that you'll be able to nip in the ball, whatever they're planning. Because why should I want to go and vote? And I will be afraid of, will I come back alive? Hmm. That is the issue that is our concern. It is not the Oshomole or oh, Baseki. Baseki. It is yeah. the, what, the, 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 the damage it is doing to democracy. Because there's no beauty in democracy when I cannot go out freely to go and vote. But when people are already seeing signs of war, a lot of people will stay at home. And that is why it is still possible for them to ma manipulate election results. Result, yeah. Because when you have a, a list of uh, voter register that contains 500 names, and at the end of the day, because of the fear of terror, only 150 come, out, come to vote. The remaining okay. 350 come, what will happen? Now, now they will make up the there, number. There's, there's obviously um, a, a political difference which has been played out in the states. But I'm just wondering, should it always degenerate to, to violence? 
and, and this we've seen across board in all our politics. It's, it's never devoid of violence. Um, Godfatherism, like you rightly said. Now, now, Jibike, how do you think we should begin to address this as a people? Politics devoid of violence and, and, and Godfatherism, the Godfather factor playing out all the time. I think it's important that the APC, in this particular instance in Edo State, that you should call both of them to order. We've seen how such violence between the um, two powerful individuals have actually ruined a state. You can see that in River State in, in previous times, as well as in um, Plato State. Yes. And it's important that the ignorant, the downtrodden, the vulnerable don't suffer because of these individuals who are actually mastering their ego. We must realize that governance is not our personal right, and nor does it last forever. You can't have power forever. So I think the APC people, APC in this instance, in um, Edo State, must call these two individuals to order and actually let them make peace. Also, when a father even gives power to his son, there's a part where you have to withdraw and let the son go on. Mm -hmm. Whether right, whether wrong, you've given power away. It's no longer your scene. So as individuals, as Nigerians, we must know that governance is not forever. Yes. And actually withdraw and move on to something else. Now, now Dipo, in, in view of the 2020 governorship election in the state, and with, with all of this happening, what, what does this portend for Edo State as it stands right now in view of the 2020 governorship election? Nigeria is a peculiar country. And at times, Nigeria defies logic. I remember it was the former military president of Nigeria who said himself he didn't know how the economy of Nigeria was still standing because it had <laughs> defied to him. If you look at the history of politics in Nigeria, let us take the last election in Ogun State as an example, 2019. You had a governor that contested on the platform of APC as the Senate to go back to the Senate. And yet he has his boy in another party, APM, and he was campaigning openly for the person. Can you imagine? The same thing happened in uh, Imo State. You have a governor, APC governor, yes. that has taken, got the ticket of APC to go to the, ticket, to the, the Senate, yes. and has his uh, candidate in AA, and campaigning for that person openly. So I, I, I think it is, if you are think my time politicians will change, nothing will change them, nothing. There's no appeal. If you know the number of peace meetings that have been held over this Obaseki uh, or Shomole food, you will know that, that only God can settle that problem. So are you thinking the political problem in those state as it exists right now cannot be solved? Between those two guys? Yes. Before the election? No way. Except we are deceiving ourselves. So what does this pretend for the election? It, 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 the ball is now in the court of the Edo people. I, I think Nigerian voters should begin to punish Nigerian politicians. Voters, I mean. But unfortunately, majority of the voters don't know their left from the right as far as politics is concerned. We, we have been in the field a lot. Majority of Nigerian politicians are illiterate. Many of them wait on the, on the eve of election. Some they will be asking, Tanonika de Bofu, who are they say they should vote for? That is the politics we play. That is why one man will be the one that will walk all the council lodge, all the chairman of council, all the members of House of Assembly, all the members of National Assembly. One man is the one that will take their name. This one go. This one will go. That is the politics we play. I remember the former governor of uh, Akwaibom, Akwabio, when he won election in 2007. And in December, he held a, what they call a Thanksgiving service. It was in the church that he announced that he was expressing his gratitude to them for former president, Richard Kumasunde. Richard Kumasunde was seated in the church. That even if you win your primary as a candidate, you'll be waiting until one man in Abuja say, I, I have canceled it. That is the politics we play. So I, I, we can only appeal to the Edo voters, but though it will not play any part in 2020, Maybe by 2024, we will begin to educate them. Nigerian politicians, Nigerian voters need to come up. And I'm using the opportunity, I always use the opportunity to appeal to our youths, because we have them in numbers. If Nigerian youth come together today to say, okay, we are going to be involved in politics, they can determine who is going to be the next president of Nigeria. But what do you see? Every evening, 
You said our youth. As today is uh, Thursday. Oh, yesterday. By 7 o'clock, you are preparing to watch Madrid and Chelsea. The issue of Nigerian position, what is this doesn't concern our youth. Ask them to name the 11 squad of Chelsea. Nigerian youth will mention it. Ask him the governor of one state in Nigeria. Because they are not interested in politics. And if you leave politics to this Yasikira, Baba, Baba, they will continue to vote for these old politicians. Okay. So what we should be doing with programs like this is to come up with a new generation of voters that knows their right from their left. Yeah. A, a new generation of voters, which, which seems like one of the solutions to, um, to profit to solve the, the myriads of our political problems. Now, in, in the context of what's going on now in Edo State, what, what is paramount for the Edo State government to do now with its security agencies just, just to curtail the ongoing violence in view of the governorship election in 2020? Jibike. It's, it's very important that we have surveillance. I'm sure in Edo State, we know some key players. As he said, the security agents must know them, the Edo people must know them. They must be held to account. If anybody goes missing, if anybody is murdered, between now and 2020, the other party must be able to be accountable for them. And the Edo state people can also do this. Although my brother told me, said that he doesn't believe it can be resolved, what about the APC at national level? What are they doing? Can they put them to order? They have the party structure. They must make sure that there's peace before 2020. All right. Do, do you think that, that what's happening at Dosti right now is a microcosm of what actually is going on in the APC as, as a national party? No, you, you see, when you have a big party, so to speak, because people of divergent interests, Marriage they, of strange they, they just come together to say, okay, we want, we have an interest to protect. This individual interest will always be there. And you know the reason why it has become very difficult for APC to resolve this matter? The only organ that can resolve this matter is the NWC of the party. And the national chairman, who is a party to this crisis, yeah. is the head say. of that NWC. They have consulted a lot of peace committees. The other party will say, no, because this man is there, I'm not going to accept that peace committee. They will dissolve the peace committee, set up another one. The other party will say, well, you have put this man there, I'm not going to accept. So, to them, it's a big problem. But I think our concern, my concern is not even APC or Shomole. My concern is an average Edo person that went through the struggle to go and elect a governor that chose half of his tenure to be fighting a war. Uh, if you think there's going to be any governance between now and 2020 when they hold the election in either October, September in Edo, it's a big lie. Because the man wants to hold on to power. Nobody wants to just do four years and get away. Actually, if it's your one godfather that says you cannot have it. And then the governor is said to be the chief security officer of the state. Yes. But this is a have a governor that is fully involved in the shenanigans going on. So there's no way that the other party will allow him to be at the driver's seat. So it is now left to the security agencies, if only they will be impartial anyway, to now stand their ground and say, OK, whoever is going to threaten the peace of this state, we will fish them out, but are they not going to be compromised? That is the problem. All right, I wish we could go on, but we're, we're out of time. And I just want to say thank you, political analyst Jibika Oshodi, for being part of the show this evening and for your contribution. And also, journalist Dipo Olayoku, thank you very much, sir, for your thank contribution you for for being part of the thing. show. Thank you for staying with us. Our plus report comes up now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. Some lawmakers from the Northeast have called on the federal government to take urgent measures required to bring an end to the continuous killings of civilians by terrorist groups within the region. This followed a motion raised on the floor of the House by Honorable Yusuf Yakub, expressing worry that despite claims by the federal government that the Boko Haram terrorist group has been substantially degraded, attacks within the Northeast on innocent residents and destruction of lives and properties has continued. Other lawmakers called on the Northeast Development Commission to provide urgent relief for many of the victims of the insurgency and tax the federal government to deploy more troops to the region. The reality of the above must challenge our military to think globally on its war on terrorism, restrategize its tactics and create room for more injection of men, materials and ideas into the war. It is saddening to say the least to learn that over 300 insurgents that came on more than 50 motorbikes that had at least two insurgents for each and another nine truckload of their fighters only met the feeble resistance of a handful of soldiers stationed in Garkida in my constituency last Friday. 
at the best of times, these soldiers are usually not above 100. The Zionist leaders are out of idea. We send them, they have done their best. When they came in, they came with strength, they came with fever, they came with commitment to end this. But now they are full of complacency and they are out of idea completely. We know this and we are aware they are out of idea. So, Mr. Speaker, it's better we do something to save Nigerians or not next time if care is not taken. A lot, a lot of honorable members on this floor of the House can take their resignation because as far as I'm concerned, I'm not comfortable. My people are dying and I'm here enjoying. There's no way I can take I want to amend the prayers slightly while adding my voice to all the speakers because all they have said is the truth. So I want to add that the relief materials that Honorable Buba has so eloquently described to be extended to these people should be extended to the people of Gulde, Askra, Kurungulam in Chibok, and Arno in uh, Borno Central. And here is my take. The fact that 2023 elections has become a popular topic in the Nigerian political terrain is frankly a bit saddening. I mean, we just had major elections last year and have not recovered from the lapses and wrongs perpetrated by several stakeholders. And now 2023 is on the minds and tongues of our leaders. 2020 began barely two months ago. And I ask, between February 2019 and February 2020, what substantial thing has been done to better the lives of Nigerians? Dear leaders, I understand that planning is important, but the results we see in the next three years is going to affect the plan you make out today. So positively or negatively, you have the power to choose that now by your actions. And for the security agencies who are decrying the security situation in Edo State, I ask why. You're in charge of making sure the state is safe for its habitats not in charge of complaining and predicting how it would chase potential election observers away. Please do your job. Caution the politicians who need to be cautioned because you will be held accountable for any security issues that occur in the state. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for staying with us. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time. Until then, be well.